More fear, no faith. More faith, no fear. Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So how do we increase our faith, thus defeating our fear, increase our faith? How can we increase our faith through the word of God? The more you meditate the promises of God, the more you internalize the promises of God in your heart, the more faith you have. The more faith you have, the less fear you have. Maturity. The more we are in God, the more we have the Word of God in our hearts, believing in all His promises, you will not have any time to be afraid anymore. Because you know God. As his promises because your faith level is increased. Now, faith can be increased. Faith level can be increased. How do we do that? Again, the word of God. How do we grow in our Christian life? By applying the word of God in our everyday situation. God will allow situations in our lives for us to apply the word of God that we have in our head and in our hearts. So let the word of God be in your heart rather than in your head because head gives you knowledge, heart gives you faith and believing. It is through the heart that man believes. Knowledge is just giving you the information. After you have known it to be true, believe. And it is through the believing that you can apply the Word of God in your everyday situation. Increase your faith. Increase it. Then you will not, then your fears will be lessened. Until it becomes zero. Until you have that confidence in you that my God is with me. God has a plan in me. I know the promises of God. God has every promise for all my needs. Why should I be afraid? Number two. How can we increase our, overcome our fear? Increase your love. Faith works by? Faith works by? No, no, faith comes by hearing. Faith works by love. What's the verse for that? Faith worketh by love? I think it's in Galatians. I think it's in chapter 5. I think it's in verse. Faith. Ginugil na ng iba. Ano sabi ng Google? Hindi pa rin makita? Ano sabi Joy? Hindi mo nakita? Mane. Ano baka mali yung verse ko? Faith works by love. Iba Facebook na hindi yung tignan. Google lang sabi ko eh. Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. Faith works by love. Work it by love. Work it by love. New King James will be done. Galatians 5 says New King James. 
Increase our faith. Increase our love. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor circumcision avails anything, but faith working through love. Increase love in our lives. Hello. John 13, 34, and 35, By this alone, man, know you are my disciples if you love one another. Increase your love for God, increase your love for me. May this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Hatred and anger and forgiveness can never be a part of a Christian's life. <coughs> this is the only thing that separates us from the world. <coughs> love. love is the only thing that the devil cannot copy. Because he's full of hate. How can we overcome fear? Number one, increase your faith. Number two, increase your love. Last but not least. Manage your thoughts. Manage your thoughts. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, what so what things are whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Fill your mind with positive, fill your mind with God's plan, fill your mind with the promises of God. Fill your mind with the plans of God in your life. Manage your thought. We can because what? We can control what we want to think, right? Are you in control of your thinking? If not, you are in a big trouble. If you cannot anymore control what you want to think, then that is a mental situation. As far as I know, that's why the Bible says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Paul there enumerates the three things how to overcome fear. Power is faith. Love and sound mind. No. Control. Manage what you want to think. How we respond. Even to fearful situations, we can respond in faith. We can respond in positivity rather than in negativity. Amen, mga kapatid? Choose to think what is good. Choose to think what is possible. Choose to think what is positive. Then you will not be gripped by fear. Then you will not be gripped by worry then you will not be gripped by negative emotions that strip you or steals the blessings of God in your life. Amen? Manage, manage, manage. Control, control, control. In any situation. In any situation. Let me give you a good example. When I was in the Philippines, one of the main concerns that I have is this. The family of Lito Santiago, which is the brother of uh, Maggie, um, he's only 55 years old. And he has six kids. The eldest is about, I think, mid-twenties, and the youngest is a sweet daughter of 13 years old. This dad was so good, Lito was so good to his kids, he is the one who prepares their school uniforms every day. Irons them, washes them, irons them, and prepares them every day for his kids. For me, I don't even know what are my kids' uniform is like. So he was so um, hands on. So when I was praying, as soon as we heard that uh, 
he had a stroke and uh, he's in the ICU and uh, uh, he's hospitalized. While I was praying, God impressed upon my heart, God will cause a transformation in the family. God, there will be a divine awakening in the, uh, uh, in the family of Lito. Now, Lito's wife is uh, um, Ida's elder sister. Okay, so, magkamag-anak eh. Ang babae, ang asawa, kapatid ni Ida, ang lalaki, kapatid ni Ida. So, God impressed upon my heart that God, I told Pastor Boyd, said, Pastor Boyd, let's continue to pray about it. God impressed upon my heart that God is about to do a great awakening in, 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 in the family of Lito. So, after Lito was uh, hospitalized, all the kids started to go to church. In our church, Hope for the World, in Palestine. They start to go to church, they start to really believe in God and and somehow they're so thankful they're so they praise God because Lito was recovering he was recovering he, from ICU he was already out to a recovery room to a, to a normal room okay. he was uh, there's no more uh, the, the tube that was attached to his mouth was already taken he can sit down actually he was talking to Maggie the day before he died that day so uh well, you know what happened? Uh, Lito passed away. Lito died. And uh, one of my main concerns was that I was thinking about the kids. Aside from losing their dad, I think the most important thing is I don't want them to lose their faith in God. Because it is when we will lose a loved one. We can lose a loved one, but let us not lose our faith in God, which is the most important. And that's one of the very reasons why I decided to go, aside from just giving them my physical presence, is that I want to make sure that none of them will lose their faith. None of them will be disillusioned and say, Kaya lang pa kami lumapit sa Diyos tsaka pa namatay yung tatay ko. You know, the devil can always whisper that to them. Knowing that they are still young believers. The devil can whisper, see, because you changed your religion. See, because you attend that church. See, if you didn't attend that church, maybe your daddy will still be alive. So those maybe can be whispered by the devil in their ears. And I don't want them to be disillusioned. I don't want them to lose their faith. They may have lost their dad, but at least if they can keep their faith, praise God. Hallelujah, right? Yeah. Because Lito, before he passed away, he acknowledged Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. So where is Lito now? In heaven. In heaven. And let's give God praise. So... My topic is about uh, controlling the mind. So when I was there, I spoke to each one of the kids. They're all very smart. They're all very bright. They're all studying uh, uh, University of the Philippines, which is UP. Matatalino mga bata. Summer's cousin. Summer's also smart. Same blood. <laughs> Are you surprised? <laughs> yeah. They're all smart, right? Diba? Uh, Summer? Yep. They're all very, very smart. And you know, sometimes being smart in the world, and we, when you use natural logic or uh, objectivity, sometimes you think, what if we didn't attend this church? Maybe that would save your life. But I am so grateful and thankful that when I spoke to them one by one, they said that they are keeping their faith. And they are keeping the perspective that they said, what if we are not close to God and this thing happened. Look at that. Look at that perspective. They say, oh, Pastor, we believe that this thing happened. Uh, it's good that we are closer to God now. And then there was one, one night uh, before we, because every night we have the service, one night they have this prayer service at another church, you know, it, the church that we all came from, uh, mga padasal, no? everything ulit ulit, tori ng papel, haring bastos, tori ng papel, tori ng ah, tori ni David. And I was sitting beside.
son, one of his sons, the you know? And and uh, he was sitting beside me, made a in prayer, and I told him, said, you know, sir, I I said the truth is salvation should be decided not when you are already dead, but when you are still alive. Mm -hmm. Because if salvation can be determined after death. Then it's useless. Why are you here? Di ba? Magpakasama na tayo lahat. Just sit with me kung kayo ng pera. Pagkamatay niyo may magbabayad ng dasal. Diretso na kay sa langit. Eh mag-ipon kayo ng marami kasi yung special mas mabilis. <laughs> so, but I'm not I'm not belittling them. This is the thing that they thought was right. They're praying religiously praying pa ulit ulit Awa mo po ang blah blah blah. Awa mo ang blah blah blah. Tori ni Papa. Ano ang kinalaman? Tori ni David. <laughs> and sometimes it's just being blind. And we were like that before. Right? You know? Because we were blinded and we thought that that was true. Until we opened the Bible. And sometimes just a simple objective. So I was talking to this to, to Ringo, one of the sons, a very smart boy. I said, look at it. It doesn't make sense, right? If that prayer can cause your dad to go to heaven, and if that is true, that prayer after death can cause someone to go to heaven. I said, man, I will. I'll just say to it that I have a few hundred dollars in the bank. Don't touch it. And just tell my my relative, use that to pay for prayers after I die. I will rape people, rob banks and everything, you know, just sit with someone prays for me until I die. Then I'll go to heaven. Doesn't make sense. So after that, he told me, it's a pastor Nolly. I will commit myself 100% to our church. It's, it's not easy losing someone 55 years old. Hands on that. But thank God for afterlife. Thank God that there is life after death. And I'm so glad, I'm so thankful that somehow my fears were just imaginary too. That I thought that it will they must think that it will, that the family will lose their faith in God, but no, it did not. What happened was they even become stronger in the Lord. Amen. And I was talking to Pastor Boyd, I was talking to the family, I said, Pastor Boyd, can you come here every, every week just to provide them with bereavement support and pray for them? Because God, it doesn't mean that Leto died, it doesn't mean that God's promise is not true. Diba? When God impressed upon my heart that God will cause a spiritual breakthrough in the family of Lito, it doesn't mean if he died, the breakthrough will not happen. Actually, through even through death, God's promise will be secured. And now I saw them all smiling. Not because they're happy, but because, because they have peace. Because they have the assurance God is in control. See, all of this, the whole family can, can, can be afraid. The whole family can be fearful. What is their future? Head of the family, 55 years old. With six kids, youngest being 13. They can have all the fears and the worries and the doubts. They choose to believe. They choose to be positive. They choose not to believe in the lies of the devil. And I believe that a full transformation will happen in the life of the Santiago family in the name of Jesus Christ. What kind of fear do you have? What are you afraid of? What's keeping you paralyzed? 
What has gripped me? What kind of fear? Yes, today, we need to be free from that Goliath of fear in our lives. Amen? Amen. That's what we Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord.